Good evening, everybody. Uh, this is Erica Deneve, and this is your new moon call. Um, we call it Lev Mekudash, and that means uh, the renewed heart, because every month we get this renewal of a, a chance to, to cycle back through and review and um, introspect and see the things that the Father has for us. So he's renewed. We know he renews us every day. Um, night and morning, uh, every week with our Shabbat and every month um, with our our Hebraic months, our new moons, and then also every year with our cycles of our feast seasons. And so we're getting ready to come into the fall season, which makes the sixth month that we're getting ready to enter next weekend um, super special. So I'm glad you're here. And this Alul is the name of this one, and it is like one of my favorites. So um, I'm going to start out with some prayer. I like I was telling Katrina, I have been super busy and I just feel like I could just feel I'm not one that really has to deal with anxiety or anxiousness much, but I have had no caffeine and my heart was I could just tell earlier why I'm trying to finish up my slides. So I'm just going to pray that he gives us the shalom and peace um, for this month and and um, share uh, the traditional um, blessing with you guys. So let's pray. Oh, Father Yahweh, I just give you praise and thanks that you just go before us and you are in the midst and you are behind us. And I thank you so much, Father, that you are surrounding us with your love and with your shalom. I thank you for your word and your message that you give us with each Hebraic month, Father. With your calendar as we honor it and we're aware of it, we begin to look and seek. Father, you speak to us in so many great and mighty ways. It's so beautiful. It just it just really amazes me all the time, the way you speak through your calendar, through your feast days. Father, I just thank you. I thank you for sharing that with us. Um, Father, so we just want to say, blessed are you, Yahweh, who gives us the new moon, the sign of being born from above and continual renewal. Blessed are you, Yahweh, who renews his mercy every morning, gives us countless opportunities to repent and start fresh. May the ancient light of the moon's face cease, never cease from reminding us of your truth, your love, and your saving grace. May you, Holy One, blessed be you, renew the sixth month unto us and unto all his people, the house of Israel, for life and for peace, gladness, joy, for salvation and consolation, for a good livelihood and sustenance, for good reports and tidings, for rains in their season, for complete healing and swift redemption. Let us say amen. Hallelujah. So welcome, ladies. So glad you are here. Um, sorry, <laughs> I'm dropping things over here. Uh, so glad you're here. So like I said, we're going to be talking about the sixth month. Um, I just wanted to do uh, a little review. I'm seeing uh, mostly names that I know. So I don't know who's going to um, see this, you know, later. We always have our... Um, videos and and we can watch later and go over them but um i was just thinking through we're actually at the end um of our cycle we have a lul um, for the sixth month and then we have one more month and so uh i'll be doing the new moon for tishri um one moment i'm doing an, an online class oh. <laughs> i'm sorry Okay, sorry about that. I've never, oh. I've never had anyone come in when there wasn't a meeting. <laughs> so anyway, so we do have the month of um, Tishri coming up. Um, and so I'll be doing that one, but we started way back um, uh, the month after Tishri, the eighth month in Heshvan. So those uh, videos are there. So um, I'm not exactly sure after we do Tishri, um, what's going to be like, what my role is going to be, what we're going to do. I'll talk to Charlie and, and see what we can figure out. But I always love to continue to talk about the new months. And so um, maybe if I just continue office hours and we'll kind of continue that up because all the, the slide presentations and the downloads are available. So if you go into your, um, your Kajabi app, your library, and you go under cafe calls. Um, if you've not been in there before, you 
I mean, you can see my faces on the picture, but it's called Lev Mekudash is the, is the new moon. So it has a Hebrew name. So it does. if you're looking for it and you're new, you may not know it if you're not familiar with that word. But if you go in there, Crystal has uploaded tonight. There are several downloads and she has gotten my slideshow um, already there. The video won't be uploaded probably till tomorrow, but the downloads are already there. Um, so there's things, the um, items that Rhonda um, has created for our local assembly are there. So it has like all of the themes that we talk about um, are on there, plus some prayers, um, some scripture writing things, just all kinds of um, stuff. And it's probably grown since Heshvan. I'll probably have to go back through and look and see what we don't have on Heshvan when we get there and start sending those so that they can upload those. So you guys have those available because they're great resources. And as we've learned in our local assembly and grown, and we have so many more resources that we pull from, uh, Rhonda has created more and more things. So I want to thank her for that. Thank you, Rhonda. Um, so um, I'm just going to do like a little review. Usually I kind of do this at the end, um, sort of um, like, you know, I have that final slide. I kind of wrap things up, but I'm kind of going to do a preview before we start in on this month. I actually just pulled out um, last year's um, notes that I had. And so I just wanted to go through and say, um, as we look at um, the months prior, and remember, I always say they flow together. It's not just here we are in the sixth month and it stands alone. We have to look at where we've been and where we're going. And all of that flows together because we're in that cycles and those circles. And so um, last year I had written this and I was reading it. I'm like, oh, okay, that's good. I think I'm going to use it tonight. So I just pulled it out. But it says um, we started the first month declaring we will do all you say. So in the sun, our, um, our sense was was speech. So and sense is not in the word of, and or not always, um, you know, uh, see, hear, and smell. It's kind of things about our, so there's speech, one is speech, one is sleep, one is anger. But in Nisan, the first month we had speech, and that's when uh, the Hebrews came out of Egypt, and they declared, we will do all you say. But then our thoughts get and thoughts is the second month we get um, get in the way and we learn we have to take them captive in the second month. In the third month, um, we are walking out what we declared, but sometimes we don't see correctly and our sight needs to be adjusted in the fourth month. Then in the fifth month, which is our current month until this coming weekend, uh, we need to get our hearing lined up with our new adjusted sight. And we know when we shema, which is our word for hearing and obey in the fifth month, it leads to the action in the sixth month. So action is what we're going to be talking about later on tonight. So I just wanted to share that with you. So you kind of see how those um, months flow together, even just, and that's only just in the senses for the months. That's just our speech and our thoughts and our uh, walking out um, and different things. So so I just wanted to share that with you so you kind of get um, like my idea and my visual of how the months work together like that. All right. I'm going to share my screen, which means that I won't be able to see you guys. To remember if there's anything that happens, I know Katrina will let me know if for some reason you can't hear me. Um, I gotta move everybody around, all my little boxes. Takes a minute. Wow, guys, I am just wasn't, uh, <laughs> did not have my screen ready to go for you guys at all. Sorry about that. Okay, here we go. My bar again. All right, Lev Mekudash, the renewed heart. So welcome uh, to our sixth month. 
now it doesn't want to turn for me. There we go. I think we're good. Okay. <laughs> Yahweh, we just pray over my technology tonight, and we just ask that you would infuse your Holy Spirit all over it, <laughs> because we'll see what we get. All right, the sixth month. Um, so we're going to be talking a lot about repentance and mercy. This is a month for um, forgiveness, repentance, mercy. It's a month of teshuva. Um, and we're also going to be um, talking about that preparation, the bride's preparation, getting ready to meet the king. Um, so there's so many beautiful symbols, beautiful um, visuals that we have for this month that he just wants to, he just wants to come and meet us this month. And, and it's, it's just wonderful. So um, I'm working on a um, little sleep and not much caffeine. And I, I might, I don't know if I'll be emotional tonight, but this is one of those months that when I'm reading through talking about the King being in the field, um, uh, his living water cleansing, it's, it can really kind of, um, kind of get me. So bear with me if I get a little emotional. So Alul, um, <clears throat> one, they have that, uh, if you read, um, uh, our new moon book from Keisha Gallagher, she has in there that it can mean search. Um, and so I haven't looked that up to see if there's like a Hebrew word that kind of goes with that. Um, obviously she knows that and has done that, but the common connection to Alul is that it's an acronym for Ani Ladodi Vadodi Li, which is I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. And uh, in Keisha's um, online new moon videos in her transcript, she says that you can almost say, I am for my beloved and my beloved is for me. And so it almost gives you more of that idea that he's, he's, he's in the midst and you know, battling on your behalf and working on your behalf. Um, and we especially see that in this month. So some of our themes are repentance, mercy, forgiveness, preparation, the bride, um, introspection, because we're in that month of teshuva, which means to turn or repent, final look at the field, because we know we're at the end of the harvest time. And so we're kind of looking, giving that final look to the field, um, especially as the king comes out to meet us there. Um, living water is going to be um, one of the things that we talk about this month at the gate. Uh, we start out with our number. It's the sixth month. So when we think about six, we think about man and beast, um, uh, particularly that man is supposed to rule over beast. Um, that is what is ideal in the garden. Um, but we know that that didn't happen. And so um, uh, one of the other um, day six connections is the sixth um, spirit. So in uh, Isaiah 11, the sevenfold spirit. So the sixth spirit is da'at, which is knowledge. And that's not just like information. That is a sacrificial love knowledge. So it's connected to like intimacy between, um, between people. So between a husband and wife, um, that word uh, yada, we get that when Adam knew Eve. So there's this intimate knowledge of sacrificial love, um, which we see when man was created, um, Adam sacrificed part of him, his flesh uh, for Eve to be made. But then later on, whenever she meets the serpent, um, Adam didn't step up to the plate there. He did not have that um, sacrificial love. He, he allowed it to happen. He made excuses why he participated. And so there was not a sacrificial love there. He did not cover her in that, in that time. So six often refers to the work of man, but ideally it represents the sacrificial love and the intimate knowledge with the creator. And that's from uh, Keisha's new moon um, from the videos on YouTube. Uh, day six is also uh, the letter Vav, which is a connector. So you'll see that a lot at the beginning of our Torah portions. Um, it may be, I think, Vietze is one. Um, so that just means and. And uh, those Vavs are there at the beginning of um, like the early screen, uh, early manuscripts, uh, the scrolls, things like that. You will see a Vav, a Vav, a Vav, because basically it's all continual, it's all connected. And so when you see that Vav, um, that like a V and like a little apostrophe, usually it's and 
you know, he went or, and he sent or something like that. Um, and so that idea of a connector to, it's like that tent peg. So we've got that connector um, from our um, uh, other months that we're, we've been dealing with. So uh, that fifth and sixth or the fourth and fifth month, which has been these hot summer, dry, parched, um, dire straits, times of dire straits. Maybe you were dealing with a lot of stress situation, authority issues, things like that. Um, this month will connect you into the seventh month where we come into rest. And so just like our sixth feast, which is day of atonement, which is preparation for Sukkot, the sixth month is preparation um, for this, the sixth month is preparation for that seventh month. Uh, we know that on the first day of the seventh month, uh, the trumpets are being sounded. Um, we, it's the coronation of the king. The, the king is returning. And so we have all of these connections there um, that we are in that time of preparation. And so we are making ourselves ready. We're preparing our hearts, preparing our land, getting our harvest ready, our first fruits. Our letter that is assigned to this month, and this is done by Hebrew sages, um, is the letter Yod. Uh, it's the 10th letter. Um, when you think of 10, we think of like divine order, the 10 commandments, a council of 10 is like a minyan. We see that in um, Ruth, the story of Ruth and Boaz. Uh, um, I think he goes to the city gates and there's a, a group of 10. And so that could be some, one of the things, if people are looking for things to do during the month, um, I've put in a couple things in here, but uh, that is one of the things you could look at is the number 10 in the, in the scriptures. Uh, like, where do you see it come up? What does it mean? I know in the story of when um, Eliezer goes to get Rebecca, um, there's like some tens in there. There's like 10 camels that are loaded up with provision and treasure kind of things. And so um, there's these tens that pop up um, so you might just go through there and just check. That could be something that you do in a study for this month. Um, tithe and testimony is also because a 10 is like a 10th of something. So it's a part of something. And then the 10 commandments are called, you know, um, they are the, the test tablets of testimony. It is the smallest letter, but it packs it, uh, a big punch because it's the hand of Yahweh and it's considered a closed hand. Um, and I was listening today to John Kostick. Uh, he has a YouTube video and I, I don't always agree theologically with him, but he has really interesting um, Hebrew connections and he's a word gematria guy. But uh, he said in Genesis, when it says that Yahweh formed man, it uses the word Yesar, which is number 3335, if you want to do a word study. And when he forms man, it has two yodes in it, but when he forms beast, it only uses one yod. Now there may be some grammatical reason for that, but I just thought it was interesting that it was like two, two hands that he uses um, to make man, but only one hand that he used to make uh, beast. I, I just heard that this afternoon. I haven't worked it all out, but I just thought it was very interesting. Um, but that's one of the kind of cool things that he does in his videos is that he brings those little nuances that we don't see because we're not normally reading in Hebrew. Yod is at the beginning of many names like uh, Jonah, uh, Joel, Joshua. So those are your, your J words, um, Jerusalem. So those would be Yona, Yael, uh, Yeshua, um, Yisrael. Uh, so you've got those Yehuda um, and Ezekiel also. So a lot of the prophets um, have the Yod in there and it's kind of considered a kind of a divine letter because it is the beginning of the Tetragrammaton yod heh vav -Hey for, for um, Yahweh's name. And Yod on the end of a word, like in Psalm 22, where he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a possessive sound. It's a my so my God, and, and, and the idea that he has this closed hand as the picture, the idea that he's holding on um, to us, you can kind of see that connection in that. So just some interesting things there about the letter. Our tribe this month is Gad. So his name, um, I have found, like uh, Keisha brings it up 
um, in her video and in her notes. Um, and I've seen it in other places where there's been a little like, um, you'll see it translated differently. Mostly it'll say I've had good fortune or the father has given me good fortune, um, which, which is, um, you know, some say, well, there were also, you know, there's the pagan deity um, in, the, in that area at that time, but the idea that good fortune or a good luck or things like that, some people like are, they don't like that connection, but he, you know, it, almost like he found favor, he's given me fortune, but there's also a translation that says that he is an invading troop, and so how you make these connections, um, I can't, 100% say, but I could say that if, if you have an invading troop, maybe, you know, uh, luck, so to speak, or Yah's fortune is on your side. Um, so whatever that grammatical connection there is, um, there's something there uh, in that. And that also it could have been, you know, uh, that Gad could have come from a, um, uh, a different uh language. So like the, um, oh, I cannot think of now. Um, uh, an Ameri uh, I'm going to just fail on um, Akkadian. I think Akkadian may be the other language I'm looking for. So a lot of these, you know, they'll say they came out of um, like the language of the, the months. Those words came out from Babylon. So their language was like an Akkadian language and even Aramaic um, connection. So Anyway, that's neither here nor there, but so sometimes when you read it, it may say he has brought me good fortune, or sometimes it may be say that he has given me an invading troop. And so being the seventh son of uh, Jacob, and he was born through Zilpah, the handmaid, you could say that here she's got seven sons. So, you know, he, there's like almost a seven as a completion. So he's completed my troop, my, you know, uh, my tribe, so to speak. So you could see why that invading troop, um, she could have used that word too, or that connection. And Keisha brings up um, in her video that she kind of leans toward that because of the blessings that you see later. And in Genesis um, 49, 19, uh, Jacob says, as for Gad, raiders shall raid him, but he will raid at their heels. And if you're watching the video right now, there's... Um, I have a small insert here of Hebrew words, and she, uh, this is in Keisha's, um, in the transcript of her video, she has this out, and it's really interesting because, again, we don't see it as for Gad, because here we just see his name, Gad, raider shall raid, but he will raid at their heels, but there's some kind of um, name play going on, and if you're looking at the video, you'll see we read right to left, of course. So you see the Gimel Dalet um, first, so that's Gad. And then you'll see that Gimel Dalet show up if you keep looking um, in different versions of the words. And those are the raiders and the raid and raid again. Um, and so I just find it very interesting that the words I have to do with invading and raid have to do, um, also have Gad's uh, name in it. So as far as being an invading troop who's raiding, I don't know, it seems to be a good connection there. So I kind of lean toward that, especially because of the month, um, you know, battling through different things that, um, you know, we're finishing up those battles of the fourth and fifth month. Um, we're getting ready and prepared to go into the seventh month. I don't know. I just see those connections. I lean in that way. And in Moses' uh, blessing, he says, and of Gad, he said, blessed is he who enlarges Gad. He shall live like a lioness and shall tear the arm, also the top of the head and he and the eyes. I messed that up on the video, or on the uh, slide. I'm sorry. The first part for himself. And for there was a portion of the lawgiver hidden and he came with the rulers of the people. He executed the justice of Yahweh and his judgments with Israel. So again, there's a lot of this warfare language and they were known for being men of valor bearing sword and shield and so um again you can kind of see how his name you know corresponding with that invading troop um kind of aligns with that he reminds us in the sixth month that those dire straits from the last two months may come with war our heel needs to be submitted to our head. Um, I'm going to go back real quick if you're looking at the videos see it says but he will raid at their heels 
Uh, last month, we talked about the letter Tet and how um, it looks kind of like a snake um, and that the, the crown of the letter, um, it, the coiled tail is is kind of submitted. It kind of bends in a little bit. So it's submitting to the head. And that's what we need to do in our, in the sixth month when we're talking about man and beast. Um, we, our, our beast nature, our heel, our nefesh needs to submit to our head, the spirit. Um, uh, and so, so those are like the pictures that we get from last month and this month that stay connected. Um, in that process. So lots of times we think of our battles as outward battles there, and there may be, it may be outward battles with children, spouses, um, authority figures that, you know, maybe at work, um, parents, whatever it may be, it could be your neighbors. I don't know. Um, but really those outward battles come down to what's going on the inside. And we want to look outward kind of like Adam you know, look outward. It's, you know, it's the woman, it's the son. She said it's the serpent. And so everybody's looking outward, but what was going on on the inside, like that they had to deal with that they did not deal with and did not submit um, to the father, to the spirit. So month six is our preparation for fall feast. Most of our prep um, will be in the 40 days of repentance, laying things down and interceding on the behalf of others. We should be guarding our gates. Um, so we talked last month um, about the traditionally the ninth of Av is when um, the walls came down, Jerusalem, the temples came down, and the month before that is when the walls were sieged. And we talked about being repairers of the breach, repairing the walls, um, guarding our gates, putting up watchtowers, being watchmen, being on the night watch. Um, so those are some of the themes that we talked about. We should be guarding our gates, which our eyes, our ears, our mouth. And these are all things that we've already talked about in our senses. I, the thing that I read at the beginning, we've already talked about these things. So these should already be on our mind and we should always be, be evaluating where we are, um, with those gates, because those lead to our actions, which is our sense for this month to the good or to the bad. First Chronicle 5 has Gad fighting val valiantly, <laughs> um, but then succumbing to idolatry and being carried off by Assyria. So what lessons do we learn from this tribe? Um, you know, that warrior aspect of things, but then how, what did they do? They gave over into idolatry. Um, so is our warfare, are we fighting for the good? Or are we fighting for the bad? Are, are we allowing things to defeat us? Um, and not using our spiritual weapons, taking up our spiritual arms. And that might be another good, um, I'm trying to think if there's another month that might go even better on it. But um, a couple of years ago at our Sukkot, we did um, Hazak Vehemets. And for the children's classes, um, I chose to do the armor, armor of God. And in studying for that and getting prepped for that, um, one of the things that came up. And I think Rhonda led me to uh, like one YouTube that led to um, like some different Bible verses studying is all the spiritual weapon visuals he gives us in the scripture. So this may be a good time to um, study that too, if you're looking for things. Um, I mean, we have warfare all the time. So anytime would be a good time for that. But um, I know Gad, um, Benjamin is also known for um, their warfare. Uh, with bows and arrows, but um, yeah, the way the father uses that language, um, it's not there. Um, it's not there arbitrarily. That battle language is there for a reason. Okay, so our constellation for the month is uh, Virgo, or in Hebrew, it's called Batula, Batula, I would think it would be, um, which is a virgin. And so if you're new to the study, um, just a reminder, I always put on here that we're not talking about astrology. We're talking about the um, story that the fathers put in the sky. Um, the Maserath is what it's called. So Mazel is um, one of the constellations. And so the Maserath is like the whole 12-piece um, 
picture. They call them books or chapters. Um, it's usually, you can find it in a circle and see it laid out. It's very, very interesting, the connections that he shows us. And so I think we can't really think about um, Batula without thinking of a few things. And one is um, the Virgin Mary. And so as Mary's preparing for birth. And so I would think a lot of us um, that are probably listening to this probably um, align with the idea that Yeshua was born in the fall, possibly at Feast of Tabernacles, maybe Feast of Trumpets. Um, I know that there's that. I know that there's some who thinks who think that he was born um, during the Passover season also, I've heard that. And this is not any of, we're not discussing what's right or what's wrong on that, but um, the idea that the Virgo is in the sky during this month kind of gives me more affirmation to my understanding that he was born during the fall season. And, um, and so there's just some really interesting aspects to that. And then also when we see so that his first coming, right, his first coming being during the fall season, well, his second coming, we also know is coming during the fall season with the Feast of Trumpets that, um, you know, announces return, the judgment books open, there's judgment happening, Yom Kippur, we got the 10 days of awe, we'll be talking more about those things next month. Um, and then our millennial reign, our, our Sabbath with him that we'll be going into, um, and all of these ideas of being, being prepared as the bride of Messiah, um, being cleansed and washed and ready and prepared with our oil. So studying the parable of the 10 virgins, um, we're going to talk about that in a little bit more here in just a second. Um, but also in Revelation 12, um, if you're looking at the screen, the picture to the right is kind of that, that a visual of the um, it says, you know, the woman in the, let me see if I still have it up on my phone. I'll just read it for you. Yeah. So a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and on her head, a crown of 12 stars. She is pregnant, crying out in birth pains in agony to give birth. Then another sign appeared, a great fiery dragon that had seven heads and 10 horns and seven royal crowns on his head. So this picture, interestingly enough, Batula, the mazel for the month, um, obviously it comes up this time every um, year. And I, as I was reading and studying, I found that there is usually some form of um, celestial makeup of Batula, Batula, the sun, the moon, and some planets and stars from Leo. So Leo is the lion. Um, we talked about him last month. And so he would be kind of above her. So some of his stars um, would be considered part of that crown. And then there's like, uh, I think there's like four. And then there's three planets that are there. And so people have um, spotted these and it's not always the exact same. There's usually some form of it because I think in 2017, like it was the whole thing, like the sun, like rose behind her, her feet, the moon was rising or setting at her, her feet. Like there was this whole thing. And Jupiter then, um, was kind of passing through her, like she was giving birth. And so there's all kinds of like interesting things when we're aware and we're looking for those signs in the skies. So, Again, I just think it's very interesting that, um, you know, here we are in September, we're getting ready for the return of the Messiah in the seventh month. And then these are the signs in the sky. And what are they, you know, what are they telling us? What, uh, it's not for fear. Um, it's not for anxiety, um, but it's a call to preparation, I feel like. So we're the bride getting ready for the groom. Um, so the mazel has her holding the picture. Um, the common picture is her holding a branch in her right hand. Isaiah 4, 2 and Zechariah 6, 12 um, talk about um, the Messiah being the branch. Yeshua is the branch. She's also holding sheaves of corn or wheat, probably depending on um, which story, which culture it's coming from. Could this be a reference to the enmity of the seed of the woman and the adversary? Um, or the gathering of the sheaves also, because we know that is also happening in these, this fall time, the gathering of the sheaves. 
the star, the brightest star there is called Spica, which is branch, is the brightest star in the constellation. And then again, um, there's always in September, there's always some form. So maybe if you have like sky view on your phone, or maybe you're an amateur astronomer, um, be checking out the skies coming up and see um, what, you know, like if you notice like, you know, those brighter planets coming through there. Uh, I don't know what it'll look like this year, but it'd be kind of neat to, to find out and talk about. Um, so some of the lower constellations that are also in the sky around um, Virgo, uh, one is called Coma, um, Desired One or Longed For One. And it's a picture of a woman sitting in a chair with a child in her arms. So again, just that idea of um, our, you know, the Messiah, you know, coming, you know, in the fall kind of, again, gives me some affirmation on that um, for me. Uh, then there's also Centaurus, which this one's, you know, this one's kind of interesting because Centaur is part horse and part man. I'm sorry, all my words are kind of scrunched up here um, on my slide. But um, in Hebrew, the name is Baze, uh, despised one. And Isaiah 53, 3, um, which we know um, we correlate to Messiah, he was despised and re rejected by man. So in mythology, uh, you know, there's this idea of two natures, um, you know, now obviously Yeshua is not part horse or part man, but being part, um, you know, divine and flesh and things like that. Um, but in mythology, the head, the story of the centaurs, the head of the centaur laid down his life. Um, and in John 10, 18, it says, no one takes my life. I lay it down on my own. So interesting connection there. Uh, there's also one more, it's called, I call it boots. I don't know if it's Buddhist boot. I have no idea, but we'll call it boots. Um, and it says that it comes from the Hebrew bow to come. In Egyptian, the name is smat, one who rules, um, subdues or governs. So again, that sounds like our Messiah, especially in his second coming. Um, a man moving rapidly, holding spear and sickle. So that's the picture that it gives. Um, and then the bright star that's in there, um, like common now, they call it beta, but I think they're Hebrew or Arabic, it was nakar, meaning the pierced. Some interesting things to think about there. All right, the fountain gate. So this is where, like last year, it all just began to come together for me and seeing um, the beauty of the connections, um, especially in the gates. The gate, I, you know, I just had a little section that I would read on it. Um, in one of the books that's on our resource page. Um, but I began to study it out a little more on my own and it just like really was getting me. So these gates um, are, you know, in the walls of Jerusalem as they're rebuilt. And we hear that we read them in Nehemiah. And also I was reading somewhere, I don't know if I have it written down, but um, I think it's the 25th of Elul is when the gates um, were finished, or not the gate, but the whole wall was finished. So they were finished, they were rebuilding the walls around Jerusalem, which also included gates. And each of these gates have been um, given one of the months. They just started in order. And how it comes together, like the way that Yahweh did that is just amazing. Um, but we know in the last two months, we passed through a valley gate, which we said um, led to the Valley of Gehenna, which again had to do with. Um, uh, Moloch worship in ancient times and Yeshua's time, it was where they would send, take out the corpses to um, like of criminals. And then last month or the month we're in now, the gate was the dung gate. So these summer months have been all about getting rid of idolatry, getting rid of the trash and the uselessness um, that we're holding on to, what are the things that are useless? Maybe it's the way I'm spending the time. Maybe it's um, anger. Maybe it's unforgiveness. Those things are useless in us. They're not doing us any good. And it, this is the time where we're starting to evaluate what we have going on and how we need to get rid of it. And now it's we've done that. So that's what these last couple months have been for. And now we're coming to the cleansing part. And he is just so gracious and merciful that he is standing there um, with those fount of living waters ready to cleanse us to get his bride ready. And that's so, 
you know, there's work on our part that we have to do. Um, but all he's doing is, is waiting for us um, to ask, because really that's the hardest part, I think. And asking him to help us get rid of those things. That's what he wants to do. He's, he's given us everything we need. We just don't call upon it. You do not have because you do not ask. My husband says that all the time uh, when I bring something up. He's like, you do not have because you do not ask. Now, I'm not talking about a million dollars, but I'm talking about provision in supernatural ways. I'm talking about um, forgiveness in supernatural ways because we know forgiveness is super, a supernatural thing. Um, we talked about last, last month for Av. Um, dealing with um, father issues, because that's what of means. We talked about dealing with father issues, earthly father issues that may be connected to how you view, um, you know, our heavenly father. So those are things we've been working through and he wants to, to cleanse us and get us prepared, give us living water so that we will not thirst. Uh, the fountain gate was located on the Southern wall near the King's garden. Um, so the way it was set up, you know, the, so where, if you think of like Solomon's temple and as they rebuilt, um, Solomon's temple, uh, in Nehemiah's time, um, you know, we had the temple and you had gardens, um, and, you know, different, uh, living areas in that place. So the King's garden was there, the pool of Siloam, the King's pool, um, Shalun is the one who's mentioned that uh, is the name of the one who fixed the wall. And his name means retribution to make whole or complete or to prosper. And you can see Shalun kind of sounds like Shalom. So you can see how that make whole or complete kind of connects there. Um, he, he was the son of Kohose, seeing the whole, and they were from Mitzpah. I think Kol Haze was uh, maybe a leader in Mitzpah, which was a town, which means watchtower. And as the bride prepares herself for the bridegroom, she gets rid of the refuge, the stuff she's holding on, um, holding, holding her back from intimacy with him. She's now ready to be cleansed and put on the new garments. And so uh, these are... this here sorry um a couple verses with the fountains in that day the mountains will drip new wine the hills will flow with milk all the ravines of judah will run with water a fountain will flow out of the lord's house and will water the valley of acacias that's joel three eighteen. and i will pour out on the house of david and the inhabitants of jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication they will look on me, the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn. On that day, a fountain will be opened to the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and impurity. And that's Zechariah 12, 10 through, um, 12, 10 through 13. 1. So again, another way to study uh, this month might be on the fountains or the living waters and the way that um, he uses those in scriptures and what they're used for. Give it a second, see if it's gonna turn page for me. Make sure it was on the right page. And with that cleansing, that's action, okay? Um, we're putting those other senses like we talked about earlier. We're putting those into action. Our speech, our hearing, our sight, our thought, they all come together. They come together in our prayer and our repentance because we're praying, um, again, what are these final things that we need to deal with? Um, we kind of did this in the spring and he's so gracious and loving that he gives us this opportunity to go through it again before we get ready to come into um, our fall season. Our spring season deals a lot individually and family wise. And then we 
we start working in on that. And then we go through these summer times where we may deal, um, a lot of the themes had to do with those authority issues, grumbling, complaining. We see that in our Torah portions. And then it moves us into um, that fall season that we're gonna be living in community one day. So how do we deal in community? How do we deal with our neighbor? Um, how do we deal with those in our assembly? Are we grumbling and complaining against our leadership? Um, are we under good leadership? Do we need to change that um, ourselves? Now we can do that. There may be issues where that need to come up and dealt with with authority, but how are you doing that? Because sitting around talking to other people, um, grumbling and complaining isn't necessarily the way to go about it. We, you know, praying, interceding, um, following the steps, the protocol, um, those are the way we deal um, with maybe if there's something we think are wrong teaching uh, or, or the authority, something's not quite right um, in, in the hierarchy of things, but be very careful in that. Um, it's, it's one of those things where um, maybe we're not recognizing or maybe we don't have all the story. I know that has happened in our own assembly where we've had people upset with um, you know, our elders or pastor because they didn't have the full story. They only heard the grumbling and complaining from other people because, you know, our leadership was not going out telling everybody, everybody's business and everything that was going on. So when they were only hearing a version of it from somewhere else, they were not getting all of the, um, the more intimate details that give a fuller picture. So they could only go on and complain about authority because they only knew one side of the story. They did not know the full situation. And so just kind of be aware of those things in this month. Um, uh, you know, just having gone through that and seen it, I think it's really important um, that we don't make our decisions and make our complaints based on um, a little piece of the story. Prayer and repentance, um, that's action. Offering and asking for forgiveness, that's action. What do we need to put down? Um, do we need to put down our offering and go ask forgiveness or make things right with our brother or sister? So as we're coming into our final harvest, so to speak, so um, a lot of us don't live in agrarian society, um, or maybe maybe you do live in a rural area. Maybe you do farm yourself, um, even on a small scale. We live in a rural area, so I see all that farming going on. Um, but the, the scripture is very clear that before you bring that to the altar, you better have things set right. Before the sun goes down on your Shabbat, you should have things right. So we need to be evaluating that um, as we come into this fall months. Our organ is the left hand. We've already had the right hand in, um, earlier. So now we have both. So now we can fully take on the work. We can build each other up. Um, and hopefully that's what we're doing because we have both hands, we can build up but we could also tear down. So we want our actions to be for kingdom work, um, not the adversary's work. So evaluate what your hands are doing. Um, I was gonna look at, let's see real quick here, the emotions that go with that. So in our one book, um, Healing in the Hebrew Months, um, for Elul, the body part is the left hand. The small intestine meridian is associated with the hand, and some related emotions are vulnerability, heartbreak, insecurity, and denial. So when we think about especially um, repentance and maybe seeking forgiveness um, or offering forgiveness as someone is seeking us um, for that, there could have been heartbreak. There can be some insecurity being vulnerable um, in those situations. So, so pray into those things this month um, if, there's, if there's situations that need to be dealt with. To go with our actions, we have our medotes. So again, if you're not familiar with these words, medotes are characteristics. Um, Meda is the singular, medot is the plural. And there's always three that are associated with, with each month. So this time it's forgiveness, decisiveness, and separation. So forgiveness is a supernatural thing that may take daily trips to the altar. I had someone ask me one time, they were dealing 
with some issues in their marriage. And they asked, how do you forgive someone? Like every time I think I've forgiven, it comes back up. And I, I told him, I said, it's supernatural. I like, I, and he wasn't necessarily a believer. So I was like, I can't give you, I can't give you a, um, a formula without, without you seeking the father on this, because it's a supernatural thing to be able to forgive. And then we have to soak in the forgiveness that he offers us because sometimes we're holding that unforgiveness towards ourselves. Um, this is part of our preparation for Sukkot when we come into um, these 40 days of teshuva, of repentance, and especially those 10 days of awe and Yom Kippur. Um, it's kind of like that final, that final stretch of the race. Decisiveness is the other one. It's the time of the year we need to get down to it and make some hard decisions. And that may go with separation that as we come into fall feast, there's a need for a separation. Always during feast times, there's something that comes up because you may have been able to kind of hide your journey, especially if you're new um, or you've danced around it. But if you're going to keep feast and they're wondering, um, you know, where, where are you going or what are you building in your backyard if you're not going somewhere to, to keep Sukkot? Uh, maybe you're building a sukkah or maybe you're just putting a little tent outside and people are like, what are you doing? And, and the, so these things kind of come up during Passover and during this time. So, so just be aware of that. And it, there's a separation, but that separation is for the point of gathering. So for all you creation gospel people, that is definitely familiar that we, we may have separation that comes, um, friends, family, coworkers, um, just things that we've done in the past. Uh, we have to separate out of those things so that we can gather together with like-minded believers and come into an assembly. Um, so the 40 days of Teshuva that begins on Elul 1. This is traditional. This is not like a commanded feast, but it has um, traditionally uh, been called the 40 days of Teshuvah to prepare for um, uh, Feast of Trumpets and Yom Kippur. Um, there's a lot of sources out there and I've used, um, I've used a couple and I, I know there's probably plenty. I don't know if Valerie Moody has, um, has any, but um, you may search out what she has on that. I know I've got some prayer books for her by her. Um, so those could be used. This is one that I used last year and she has so much stuff in it that I didn't even use like everything that was available as far as like the readings and meditations. Um, this is uh, Rabbi Deborah Brandt. She's from um, the Chicago area. Actually, we have some people, actually my uh, daughter-in-law um, has uh, studied with her and been part of her congregation in the Chicago area. And, um, and so she's got several different kind of meditation books, one for the 40 days of Teshuva, um, uh, Psalm 119, uh, she goes through that. And I have one more, Rhonda, if you can remember, you can put it in the chat. Um, so Rhonda may have a couple more too. So you can look online and you can find there's some messianic congregations that I'm sure have some really good messianic um, and, and doc, uh, Dr. Deborah, uh, Rabbi Deborah is messianic. So, so she does include Yeshua in her, you know, her meditations and thoughts and writings. Um, Psalm 27 is read um, uh, daily. So you can look up the traditional readings for uh, the 40 days of Teshuva. Um, I think last year, um, we just made a calendar. Um, we made a calendar and um, put like different things to pray for, uh, lead, you know, things with our leadership, things with our uh, community or assembly, things with our state, um, you know, government wise, you know, there could be time to, to add all those things in. So you can have a prayer focus every day um, or this like a weekly however you would like to do it. Um, let's see. Before I get into this, I do want to read. Um, this is straight from Keisha's transcript of her Alul, month of Alul. And she talks about the parable of the 10 virgins. So I meant to read this back when we were doing um, the mazel, but I'm going to do it now before we get, because we're actually almost toward the end. Um, the parable of the ten virgin is set in this season, just before the fall feast and the return of the bridegroom. 
Not only is the virgin in the mazel this month, the gospel and the stars, but other things mentioned in this parable also hint to the truth. The virgins slumber and sleep and awake at the midnight cry like the piercing blast of the shofar on Yom Teruah. Yeshua warns that the Son of Man is coming on a day and hour that no one knows, which is an idiom for the new moon, especially the high holy day of Rosh Hashanah or Yom Teruah. Those that do not have enough oil for their lamps are told to go and buy for themselves. And then she gives Matthew 25, 1 through 13 is that parable. Um, and so this, again, is a, a time frame that you could be um, focusing in on that and, and reading that. Um, and Rhonda, uh, she was sending me kind of a prayer. We were talking, texting, and she sent me a beautiful prayer um, as I, she knew I was going to be preparing for um, this amongst my busy, busy schedule. And so in her prayer, it was so good. I told her I was going to steal it and use it for tonight um, in our spiritual warfare. This month has been a month of revelation, testing, and comfort as you show us how to rebuild after the destruction of wrong words, false reports, and generational sins. The things that are in kind of like those brackets are, are mine that aim to defame our faith in your amet or truth. Thank you for restoring our temples and for helping us shamar against feelings. Shamar means to guard um, feelings of incompetence that would paralyze us from moving into transition. As we move into the sixth month of Elul, we are out in the open now as we travel to meet Yeshua in the field. Help us be alert in this vulnerable but joyful time. Maybe, may we be in a place of receiving gifts that you have for us. This is not the time to be isolated. This is the time to fight those feelings. Remember, we were just talking about vulnerability, um, insecurities, but sometimes it's really easy to pull back once we've been hurt. If you've gone through that these last few months, uh, maybe you know you kept spring feast and from that, um, because people realized, what are you doing over there? Um, maybe there was things that happened and then maybe it's not even related to feast, but um, I know that that does tend to happen um, when people, especially when you're newer to, um, the feast days and keeping the calendar, um, you know, they begin to get questioned. And so then there's just like, you just want to pull back, but this is not the time, um, that could be rooted in rejection, mistrust. Um, it's time to get ready to be in Sukkot in the seventh month. So we got to work on those issues because we're going to be in community. We're going to be with the assembly. And this is how we're in an eternal witness, um, if you're a creation gospel, you know that those words assembly and eternal witness and the Moedim for the feast days, those are all connected for eternity. And so, so it's up to us to like, again, fight through that spiritual warfare, but he's given us all the tools. We're not doing it alone. And it's, we need to remember that. Um, I'm going to stop share just for a minute. I still have another slide, but I'm going to stop share for a second. and because my printer broke, um, I have another thing here that I wanna read to you guys that I found. If I can get out of this. There we go. Okay. So, as I was looking about the king in the field, because this is one of the most beautiful parts of this month, is that, um, you know, we know that uh, Yeshua came out of his heavenly realm to dwell with us, um, to show us the way to walk, to show us how to walk out the Torah, the ancient paths. Um, and he is so beautiful and so merciful to do that. And not only just to walk it, but that he laid his life down for us. And he invites us, he invites us in every, every day, every week at Shabbat, every new moon, every feast day, he's inviting us in. Um, and this month especially highlights that. And so imagine, I just want you to kind of put yourself, um, like I think of like Ruth and Boaz, think of um, those situations where, you know, there's, there's people working the fields. Again, we're in an agrarian society. They're out there that the, the barley harvest has been coming in, the harvest uh, of wheat um, at Shava Oat has been coming in. And now we're doing all the other things. All of our fruits, our vines, the wine, um, the olives. Um, and of course, 
those things have to do with like the Holy Spirit too. So imagine yourself um, out there with your fields and there's things that he wants to deal with. Um, last, those last few minute things that he is so gracious and merciful that he comes to you. He comes out to the field and in Christine Vallis's um, workbook that she has, she does a month study. She does the chalkboard studies. Um, and in her um, uh, journal that she has for the month, I'm going to read a little bit. She says, um, as we open our hearts in his tent, the master gardener, because that's also what he is. He is the gardener gives us wisdom on navigating those fields that concern us. Um, maybe that field is our family. Maybe that field is our marriage or our ministry. Um, so he, imagine your king coming along and saying, look here at this, at this marriage field you have. Look at these things you're holding against your spouse. Or uh, maybe in the parenting area, look how you're holding um, these high standards to your children, um, maybe the way you're interacting with them. Maybe there's some weeds that need to be pulled. Maybe there's uh, some area here that is um, parched because we've just had this long, hot summer and you've been focusing on maybe this field over here, but this field has not been watered. It needs living water. And he's here to show you. He's so gracious. He's not just gonna let it, let it fail. He's not gonna let us fail. He's coming to say, We've got some things still here to work on before our final harvest, because I want this parenting field. I want this marriage field. I want this ministry field or this work, whatever it looks like, whatever it looks like, this anxiety, this depression, this whatever. I want these things. Um, I, we need a fruitful harvest. So what is it that we can do? And it may be living water. Maybe we've overwatered and drowned <laughs> some things and we need to pull back. And he's going to show us how to, to, to work in each of those situations. So as I was looking some more things up, I found this blog and her name is Robin Smith. I do. She's a believer, um, but I don't believe she's messianic, but she did. She is familiar. She may be, I don't know. Um, but uh, she does talk about the, it looks like the Hebrew months and she talks about Elul, king is in the field. And I just wanted to share it with you because I, why reinvent the wheel when somebody else did it very beautifully. Most of the year, the king lived in a palace protected by guards and iron gates. To have an audience with the king, you had to be summoned. Should you approach without being summoned, you would die. Think of Esther. Um, unless he extends the golden scepter, you and, scepter to you and spared your life. After the summons, there was a palace protocol to learn before you could approach a king. You had to dress correctly, um, speak correctly, have proper mannerisms. Your presentation had to be flawless. Once you got to the capital, you were ushered to the palace through the many intimidating gates, corridors, and antechambers that led to the throne room. Even the Queen of Sheba passed out when she uh, came before King Solomon. But once a year, in the month of Elul, the king would come to the field. He would leave his palace and go out among the people. He would set up his royal tent in the field near a town, and all who wanted to see him, they were welcome. The announcement was made. The king is in the field. The king is in the field. They were all welcome to come just as they were. No dress code, no protocol, no intimidation. The king receives them all with a smiling face and radiant countenance, desiring to hear their concerns. The peasant behind his plow has access to the king in a manner unavailable to the highest ranking minister in the royal court when the king is in the palace. And then she gives some biblical examples, um, Jehoshaphat um, going out. The king went to the field to return the people's hearts back to the, back to the Lord in restoration. When he went out among the people, he saw things uh, that God didn't like, injustice, bribery, oppression. So he established judges to end oppression and bring justice. Uh, God wants his people to experience his character. He wants to manifest his justice, his righteousness, and his love. This wasn't being seen among the people. Then she talks about Melchizedek, who came out and met Abraham. And then, of course, the greatest king who left his throne to come to the field was Yeshua. He lived in our field in a tent of mortal flesh. 
He was God made accessible, smiling and radiant. He came to manifest God's goodness, love and righteousness to heal and deliver all. He came to draw us into relationship with the father. That's what it looks like when the king is in the field. He is the king of kings. Um, he made us kings and priests. We are in the field. What should that look like? We should be walking among the people, receiving them with a smiling face, listening to their concerns like Jehoshaphat, reconciling them back to God by manifesting his righteousness and his love toward them. Second Corinthians 5.20. So we are Christ ambassadors. God making his appeal as if, as it were through us, we as we, as his representative, beg you for his sake to lay hold of the divine favor now offered to you and be reconciled to God. So I just really love what she had to say there that not only is, you know, Yeshua, we know he's our king in the field, but we also are his representatives that go out um, right now until he comes back. The king is still in the field right for us, but there are those who have not yet met him. And so we are kind of those ambassadors and what a beautiful picture as, as we are being cleansed, as we are laying those things down, as we are searching out the way to do his kingdom work, we're going into the field uh, for him and with him so that they can meet the king. Maybe we're showing them the way to the king's tent that is in the field. The king is in the field. He's coming out to meet you where you are in these last days before the final harvest. He'll show you the living water from that, that fountain gate. For, he'll show you the living water for your thirsty land. He will show you the things that need to be pulled up, done away with so that you can be fruitful and bring in your best to the wedding feast. Sisters, let us lay it down at his feet. He can take it all, bringing restoration to our land. All right. I think that is all I have for you guys tonight. So if you want to unmute, I have a little bit of time here. So if you want to unmute, tell me what you think about the month of Elul and things to come. I'll look over in the chat here. I love this month, Erica. It's Marsha. Hi, Marsha. Hi. <laughs> It was beautiful. It was beautiful. And you know, like I was talking to uh, Lynn earlier today and we were just discussing some things and it was like, I'm sitting here with my jaw open because so many things that we're talking about and what we're coming into, you know, with, um, you know, trumpets and Yom Kippur and Sukkot and everything. It was like, you were just like nailing it. And, and I just, wow. Wow. I'm just... He's so amazing. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, just uh, everything's falling into alignment. And of course, when you're talking, I have all these, I think of all these things and I'm writing <laughs> a ton of notes, but um, yeah. And I found it interesting too, that you were talking about the, you know, with the heel in the beginning and we just got done reading the portion of Kev, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So, Yeah. That's one of the things I didn't put on the, uh, usually I try to give a list of the four Torah portions because the Torah portions, um, you know, you can see those connections in there. So I did not do that this month. So um, when you're writing your notes, look up what the four Torah portions for the month are and see if you see connections to the month. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, Erica. Hello. Hi, it's Lynn. Um, you know, like Marcia said, um, we were just talking and it was like she was, I've been going through some things and she was ministering to me about, she's like, this is a time of separation, you know, and um, <clears throat> everything that you were speaking of, you know, from the emotions and the different things that one would experience at this time, you just nailed it. It was just amazing to me. Um now, this isn't the Parsha. This is 
I, I, I don't know where I, I kind of got a little bit late coming in. So I'm not sure where your information was coming from, you know, but um, I, I was starting to get, I, I'm getting a revelation of this, you know, even with the Parsha that, you know, even though it, it's a cycle, it happens every year. It's like, um, the very things that we're experiencing in the earth realm is coming out of these teachings and and um, and it's lining up with the planets and all that stuff and it just I'm blown away I I just came into a new <clears throat> kind of a um, I don't know if it was a revelation because I really haven't grasped it all I'm like Marsha I'm like with my mouth wide open right now <laughs> but it's you know, I don't know. This this is really amazing to me. Beautiful. I I know, like when you begin to be aware of it, even like you were saying, like the signs in the sky that he gives us. Like when I was reading about that, um, about Virgo, you know, and the way it all looks and how it lines up to, you know, Revelation, mm -hmm. um, every September. You know, I'm just like he has put all of this here, and he's just that that treasure you know, that we're digging out. Um, it's yeah. just beautiful. And, and the other thing too was like, before you even started, I just kept on thinking about Ruth and Boaz, you know, um, even in the beginning when you were talking about, you know, the, um, the wheat and the, you know, mm -hmm. and the, and the, the harvest, you know, being left and everything. And, I was thinking about that. And when um, I told Marsha, I just like I was talking to her and all of a sudden I started thinking about that one scripture out in Exodus 15, where it says, you know, thou shall bring them in and plant them in the garden or plant them in the. Um, uh, what was it? Plant them in the um, garden of thy, thy inherit, not garden. What is that? Plant them in the okay, thou shall bring us in and plant us in the mountain of our inheritance in the mm. place um, that thy hands have established in the sanctuary that they, that, um, that you have made us to dwell in. Mm. And, um, you know, that scripture was just coming to my mind and I had no idea that it was correlating with even um, this, this, this season of separate separation and, um, you know, from people and stuff and, you know, it's, it's, it's just mind blowing. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's beautiful. If you know, if you know the scripture reference, if you'll throw it down there in the chat, I would love to, to see it and read that. Like just as you're, as you were um, rattling off there, I was seeing things because, and also when we think about our senses, um, don't just think about ours, but how does Yahweh see, how does Yahweh think, <laughs> which his ways are above our ways. Um, like does and he hears us so we're about shema but it says that he also shema's us and then taking action on our part so when you were reading that um it made me think of you know his hands his hands taking the hebrew people and pulling them out of egypt and planting them in this new place and then yeah and then the verse you read you know like you know we act because he acted you know, we love yeah. because he first loved. Yeah. And so we're a mirror of, of those actions and senses, so to speak, that that he shows us. Yeah. I, I don't know how to text on this platform, but it's it's Exodus 15, verse 17. Okay. If you want to put it on there. Um, 15, verse 17? Yes. Okay. So there we go. Great. I'll write that down. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Oh, thank you. I just love this month so much. I just love the fountain gate, the cleansing waters, that it's by the king's garden, that the master gardener comes to our garden and shows us, you know, how to garden. <laughs> I just think it's a beautiful, beautiful image. You know, Erica, this is Marsha again. I um, and I, I don't want to take up everybody else's time, but I just um was noticing too, like you know, as we're um, and I and I do have um, 
oh, what's her face's book, uh, Christine Vallis. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, you know, she mentions too, like, we're just coming out of, you know, the month of the straits, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it's like, I almost, you know, I, it seems like with the different things, like, and then you mentioned community and somebody else in the chat, you know, said that it was like the second time that she's heard community within, I think Valerie Moody, she said, mentioned it. Um, but like, right, like there's, um, I definitely have seen like a war that's going on, like as we're approaching, you know, this time. And, um, you know, I, I was just sharing with Lynn too earlier that, you know, um, how the enemy, you know, like if we let him, he will, you know, he'll try to put like offenses in our lives and things like that. And it's not the time to be doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and trying to, you know, that we should be about, you know, be busy too, um, you know, like you said, be in those watchmen on the wall. And when offenses come in, you know, trying to to speak life into those people and help them get redirected and and um it, it's just i just feel like there's this other like there's like i know there's a narrowing but i just feel like almost like you know um there, there's a narrowing um and a separation um uh like um prior to this time you know me and then and i just think it's amazing that he gives us this 40 days of teshuva, which she said, you know, yeah. isn't like, but that he gives us this 40 days for us to get our, our, our act together, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then, mm -hmm. and then an additional 10 days after that. And, uh, you know, so just to be praying for those people that are struggling, that are not receiving the word of truth, you know, that um, um, it, it's just, it, it's really like, heartbreaking when people don't receive the truth or the or or good counsel you know yeah. Yeah. Um, but I just I just wanted to mention that you know that it's um that even though we're out of the straits I still feel like this squeezing <laughs> going on I don't know but mm -hmm. you know maybe it's more of a focus like a focal point of you know keep like you said something about eyes and vision is that this what you said was attached to this month was spirit or was that last month spiritual vision? Uh, vision was a couple months ago. Um, okay. So I, what did you say? This let's see. Vision was the fourth month. Fifth month was hearing. Hearing. Okay. So we're at right now. We're at the. We're at action right now. Action. We're at action. We're okay. putting all we're those uh, those previous senses together. We're bringing them all together into action now. Okay, so so Av is is the Shema. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Yes, hearing the month of Av. Yeah. Okay, so that makes sense then, because like you know, if they're you know you're trying to deliver the the word and 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 um um and then now the action with uh, with us the ones who are trying to deliver that word you know to the ones mm -hmm. who are not Shema that makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay. I just yeah, we're still like in it. <laughs> huh? I said, we're still in it. We still have a, oh, yeah, a, you know, I know. we're still in it, we're but, in um, it. but I can definitely feel that, um, I don't know the connection of what we're getting ready to go into, you know, but I still feel like there's like a squeeze and even though we're past the, the months of the straits <laughs> or, you right. know, or the, the, the week of the straits, you know, whatever the couple. All right, sister. Well, yeah. Well, and I That's think, you know, it. as we cycle through, you know, there's always, there can always be, you know, because we have a, a pattern and a template doesn't mean necessarily that, you know, so as we were going through those three weeks, those three weeks, I can't necessarily say personally, like I was feeling a tightening, tightening and a squeezing in certain, in a way that I would expect it, you know, for yeah. me, it was just me. It was actually like this, like not physical, like, um, my schedule and making me realize that I was tightening and squeezing myself. I was putting myself in bindings and, right. and, and recognizing where I, so, you know, for me, it wasn't so much like 
there was this thing happening or this thing happening or this thing happening, you know? Right. And so yeah. for me, it, it looks different for everybody. It, do, yeah. it doesn't and, necessarily and have to say like, that it. Yeah. I don't mean like a narrowing of, of chaos or anything. It, it was, it, it's like, that's why I said a focal point, like, mm-hmm. like, like it was an important to be focusing on yeah. the spiritual things that are important right now. Like, yeah. um, you know, whether it be like, okay, you know, um, your ministry, like you said earlier, mm-hmm. or, um, you know, sometimes we get so many things on our plate, you know, like you just said. And, um, so that focus was like, you know, okay, you know, every, it's not that all of it was bad and all of, you know, and it is good, but he was just like, he had a focus, mm. um, of, you know, what is important right now, what he wants us to, what he individually, what he wanted yeah. to focus on. Um, but then also, you know, um, a narrowing of, um, gosh, how do I want to say it? Like even, you know, might be people in, in your community. You know what I mean? That I had those um, exact words in my head when you said oh that. Oh my gosh. Okay. So <laughs> I was being really quiet. I was walking on eggshells. So, um, yeah, because I don't want to make it. Yeah. Because I, I, that's what I mean. I think there's another, like, se- there, like almost like there's another separation coming, you know, like it, it, it's just, um, that's just what I feel and what I've been sensing and, and what I'm kind of witnessing in, a, in, but anyway, um, praise God that I just, I just thank God for you. Thank you for doing this class. I love it. Oh, praise you for all the things that he's taught other people. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I yeah. give you all the things that he, yeah, I just uh, take the time to like put it all in one place for you. So I'm yeah. just so thankful that he has like given me a passion for this because it really has just, uh, I don't know, it just spiritually in my walk has helped me so much to be more practical and visual in those things. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He, um, can I can I respond to Marsha? Sure. Sure. <laughs> well, so I was just uh, or anybody else. I'm just as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking back. So, like in the uh, in the fourth month, the sense was uh, sight, right? And so when you first enter those straits, you don't know where you're going. You don't know how long that journey is. So you really can't see your vision. You don't have a vision right? So you're walking on in blind faith. You have a choice, right? We have a choice. Will we be paralyzed mm-hmm. and stand still or will we continue? Mm-hmm. And as we keep Got walking, we, as we keep walking in the faith that Yahweh has, that we have in Yahweh, as we get closer to the end of those straits, we start and we come into the fifth month, we're listening. We can hear him. He's encouraging us. He's saying, come on, you can do it. Come on, I'm here, right? And then as we come, now we're coming out. Now comes the method of decisiveness. Where yeah. where we go? What are our actions? What path will we be taking, right? Mm-hmm. What are we going to be doing with our hands? Like, what are the actions now? Now we have to decide, right? So based on what we have seen or not seen, based on what we've heard, right? Like what did we listen to in the last month, right? We talked about the good reports and the bad reports. Now what? Now we have this, this is the culmination. Where do we go from now, right? Right, so now we're here. We've almost like we've arrived. We've come out of those straits, now what, right? It's a beautiful visual, Marsha, that you were that you were describing. It like totally just made me like so tenderhearted. Like the father's so good. He's so good when we don't see him and we can't hear all the time. Yet he's still there cheering us on, calling us, saying, I am here. And then we get to that field. Yeah. And there's who's waiting for us. Yes. The Amen. Jesus, our Savior is waiting for us. Like, hallelujah. Amen. I'm blown away, blown away by this whole conversation, Marsha. Yeah. Um, that wasn't even my comment. My comment was, uh, I, I was thinking about the, 
when Erica, Erica, when you were talking about um, uh, watering the field, is have we are have we? Uh, um, you didn't you didn't use it, but these are my words. I wrote down some notes like, have I tended all my fields? Like you said, did we do we did we just water one and then mm -hmm. others are perched and neglected, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then you said also, or did we overwater, right? So what does that like? So I like I'm envisioning this. I'm like, overwatering is like it leads to uh, decay. It leads mm. to, wait, let me write, let me see what I wrote. Um, uh, okay, here we go. Um, deteriorating. You, you used the word drowning and mm -hmm. I was deteriorating, right? Mm -hmm. It's a slow process sometimes, right? When you over water, you don't know because you only see what's on the top. Like I'm thinking about when I overwater my cact my um, violets, and like then they start rotting at the core. I can't really see it until it's too late. It's been they they're overwatered, right? Mm -hmm. And so, what is that like? I I just saw that as like a lack of balance in our actions and what mm -hmm. we're tending to in our life, right? Yeah. And so I was thinking, I wrote down to myself, have we prepared, are our fields fertile and ready for the king to travel through? If Beautiful. he's traveling over the land, so this brings me to like something that the father's been speaking to me about the, in this month, this fifth month of borders and boundaries. Mm -hmm. And so a field, when you were talking about the field, I was envisioning the land, when you were talking about the land, like our marriage or our parenting or our community, right? Those are all places that are, that have borders, right? So mm -hmm. when you think of fields, I'm thinking of like an aerial view. You have a field of this corn and a field of this and this and this, right? They all have borders, right? So I just am asking myself, have I prepared our, my fields? for his arrival, for the king's arrival to meet with us. Um, you talked about the restoration of our field. That's the restoration of our land, right? Yes. Are we in a place that we have, that we're ready, that we can receive, right? Um, so that preparation then goes to the theme of this month, right? Prepared. That's like, have we done what we should have? So that when he comes and he travels, it's like when you know when we have company, we want to clean our house. We want everything to be, you know, as good as it can be, as clean or whatever, right? We're gonna brighten it up and I get it ready. Exactly, getting ready. And I thought, are my fields have my fields been watered properly so that they are lush and green mm -hmm. and fertile for the king to come through, right? Yes. Hallelujah. So beautiful. I'm just blown away by this beautiful visual of the borders of our land the fields of our life wow. so beautiful it's gorgeous thank you Rhonda you're welcome ladies we're gonna have to um we're gonna have to end recording and then my library is closing so I'm gonna have to hop off I've loved our